Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So, questions to the Prime Minister. Jeremy Corbyn, in this one, he is beating the stuffing out of Theresa May. And I swear, man, there is a fundamental difference in how he was when he first started this between how he is now. It's just, he's like a strutting peacock. And I don't necessarily think he's doing it on purpose. I think he's, I think he's become more comfortable in a role. And let's be honest, there's some personalities that jive well with one another in regards to the, the, the matchup, how one person's style versus another person's style. He, he has somewhat of an advantage here. Many of the tactics that they were using, let's say Ed Miliband versus David Cameron, well, these two actors are similar in many regards. The, the political distance between these two things aren't very drastic in the least. One person does something, they can throw it back and say, well, you guys did X, Y, Z when you guys were in power. And this around and around this goes. It's almost like, yeah, you're horrible. Well, you're horrible too. Yeah, yeah we just told him. Well, yeah, but you guys have just admitted that you both were horrible, which is, doesn't necessarily get you any points. Cameron, I mean, Corbin is someone outside of this. I mean, Corbin... I would imagine Corbyn, I understand this is the paradigm of politics in America, and I know there's differences, but I think there's similarities also. Britain and America are so close. Um, you guys are only like a shade off from us in, in, in the politics. One of the things that Sanders had going for him is that he wasn't really part of the political apparatus, meaning the two-party system. He would caucus with the Democrats, but nobody for once saw him as being a Democrat, including the Democratic Party themselves. Ultimately, they understood Sanders was an independent who was just so happy running in the Democratic Party to push the party to the left. Now, I, I make this point to say that when people are down on the parties and they're looking for something outside of these things, the attacks that many of these parties use and everything else just don't apply. They don't apply. And I suspect they knew that. I, I suspect when they first started dealing with Jeremy Corbyn, they understood that many of these old attacks that they would use on many of the standard labor or the, you know, the, the, the new labor, the Tony Blairites, wouldn't necessarily work with Corbyn. Corbyn was distinctly different. I mean, guy was full on socialist. So he was somewhat distinctly different. You can't necessarily use these class attacks in this way or party attacks in this way when this person looks to be somewhat distinctly different than the people who came before him in the party. So in their case, they used to use this idea of, oh, this guy isn't serious, this guy's a socialist, this guy's gonna bankrupt Britain, this guy's, look at his suit, look at his suit, his suit is not even up on him good. All of these ridiculous attacks. But the attacks were meant to be ridiculous. The attacks were meant to say, this guy's not a serious actor and this guy should not even be at this dispatch, dispatch box. That was the point. The public are stupid idiots and ultimately if we tell the public that this guy isn't serious and we treat this guy as if he was not serious, we can get the public to buy into this kind of group think, meaning this group think of um, there's certain things that we should be able to think and certain things that we shouldn't be able to think. And we're going to put this kind of implicit pressure that if you're supporting this guy, that you're not all that serious. That type of stuff. Democrats do it here without issues of identity. If you're voting for Trump, you're sexist and you're racist and you're a bigot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Same thought. It's just used in a different way. It's this, you know, it's like political psychology and the way they're dealing with people. There's a problem. That only works when there is a certain amount of doubt with regards in the way the public is perceiving that person. Meaning the British public looks at him, the British public hasn't necessarily made up their mind on him, they don't necessarily know what to think, the guy calls himself a socialist. So yes, they can exploit this doubt in the public with not knowing who this particular person is. They can use it, they can exploit it. If you have an election, however, if you call a snap election and it becomes very clear that this guy is not just serious, that the public would probably prefer him, then that attack doesn't work anymore. If you're going to use that attack that, oh, this, you know, these people who are supporting this guy isn't serious. Well, now you're talking about a large section of the public. You're calling, you're essentially being patronizing to a large section of the British public. So that attack doesn't work anymore. So bankrupting Britain, that's one of the attacks that will continue to be used, but none of this we're not taking this person seriously anymore. I think he feels himself on this. And I think he understands that there's been somewhat of a sea change in the way that A, he's perceived, and in the way he himself projects himself or projects himself in that dispatch box. I suspect he's somewhat consolid 
consolidated power and labor and in consolidating power and labor he for the most part has a clear support among his base and among the people of the country who now when they're looking at the polls seemed would prefer Jeremy Corbyn if that election was held today so I, I'm I full well believe that what's taking place on the outside of this particular edifice is having an effect on him as an individual in this dispatch box and this is a lot of wood to shop but I'm trying to make this point that he is he is sticking a tour in these debates and in this particular one she got she got the stuff and beat out of her he's going to hit her on the nhs please defend your nhs please defend your nhs please defend your nhs do not let them gut the nhs they're going to do the same thing to you that they do they're trying to turn you into little america privatize one thing after the next after the next after the next nhs that's what they're trying to get their hands on just like they did your railways and this other stuff um so yeah, he should hit her on this. He should hit her on this. Coming from a country that don't have a healthcare system, protect your NHS. Let's take a look. Questions to the minister. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Could I take this opportunity to wish you, all members of the House, all our public servants and all of our armed forces a very happy Christmas and all the best wishes for 2018. And could I pay tribute, Mr. Speaker, to our very hard-working National Health Service staff, many of whom, unlike us, won't get a break this Christmas. Is the Prime Minister satisfied that the National Health Service has the resources it needs this winter? <laughs> Prime Minister. First of all, can I join the right honourable gentleman? He refers to those NHS staff. Real quick. That is a sexy blazer. I love that blazer. But blue is my favorite color in general. And yeah, I like it. I like it. This is nothing to do with politics at all. This is just me looking at this and saying, I like that dress. I like that outfit. Let's, let's keep going. Sorry, nothing to do with politics. She's still going to get the stuff and beat out of her. But if you're going to get the stuff and beat out of you, you should be wearing a blazer that looks like this. <laughs> let's keep going. Off who will be working very hard this Christmas and who won't get a break at Christmas. Of course, it's not only our NHS staff who will be working hard this Christmas. It's also our emergency services and many others who, uh, who go to work on Christmas Day so others can enjoy their Christmas Day. And we thank all of them. He asks about preparations for uh, winter. I can say to him, the health service has prepared more extensively for this winter than ever before. These plans are helping to ensure safe timely care for patients. As it happens, those aren't my words. They're the words of the chief executive of NHS providers. Jeremy Corbyn! Well, Mr. Speaker, Sir Simon Stevens did say the NHS needs four billion next year just to stand still. And the reality is the government has given the NHS less than half of what he asked for. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister talks about uh, the money that the NHS needs, but in the uh, 50,000 people were left waiting on trolleys in hospital corridors last month. Last week, more ambulances were diverted to other hospitals because of A&E pressures. 12,000 patients were kept waiting in the back of an ambulance because there was no room at the A&E. So ask the Prime Minister again, has the NHS got the resources it needs this winter to deal with this crisis? You know, what's wild about this is... It, it, Theresa May continuously comes out with this kind of, well, we've been putting money into X, Y, Z, completely missing the point. And maybe she's not necessarily missing the point. I mean, maybe she knows full well, but she's making an argument or structuring her argument in a particular way of, well, we've put in X, Y, Z for this. Just because you've put in money for a particular thing doesn't necessarily mean that it has all of the resources that it needs to function the way it's supposed to function. It's not about, you know, it's not this... Well, we put in $2 million, but what if it needed $4 million? What if it needed 10, you know, at this point, she's saying, well, yes, this particular thing is great. They're stocked, they're prepared, et cetera, et cetera. And at the same token, there are billions of dollars 
what do you say, four billion dollars or four billion pounds just to stand still. And she's like, it has everything it needs. It has everything it needs. Everything is going sw sw swimmingly well. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. He's, he's hit her on this, and he should hit her on this. Like, if, as a, like I said, man, as a country that don't have an actual healthcare system, I mean, you have situations in the United States where people make this choice between food and medication. You know, the, this idea of going to the hospital or not going to the hospital because they don't want to have a hospital bill. Protect your NHS. And I would say put the resources in it. Conservatives have a particular methodology about them, at least in the United States. I can tell you what it looks like in the more advanced stages um, of this kind of rapacious capitalism. Weaken the system itself. Weaken it. Find ways to undermine it. Find ways to get money out of that particular system. And then find ways to privatize elements of it. And you just kind of cannibalize the system. You privatize one aspect of it after the next, after the next. At some point, you have a normalized society of people who didn't necessarily remember when you actually had an NHS. But it ebbs away. It ebbs away. Right, let's keep going. I can't say it enough. Protect your NHS. These people will go after it. to the right honourable gentleman. He knows full well that NHS funding is at record levels. And, and, and in the autumn budget, we put some extra funding in to the NHS this winter, in addition to the £6.3 billion extra that is going in to the NHS over the coming years. But let me... Let me Time after time again, the right honourable gentleman will come to this house yeah. and complain about what is happening in the health service. Can I just, can I just say to him, can I just, can I just, can I just tell the house what is happening in the health service? We see now seven, seven million more diagnostic tests than seven years ago. 2.2 million more people getting operations and survival rates for cancer at their highest ever level. Now what does, those are figures, but what does it mean? What it means is more people getting the treatment they need. It means more elderly people getting their hip operations and it means that today there are nearly 6,500 people alive who wouldn't have been if we hadn't improved our cancer care. Yeah, again, you're... this argument style is really annoying to me. I understand why she does it, and I understand why conservatives do it in general. It, they don't do it their way in the United States. They do it their way in Britain. That is a British thing. It took me a little bit to get used to that. I would hear Cameron make this pitch over and over again, and it's like, yeah, something sounds wrong with this, but I can't put my finger on what sounds wrong with it. Well, what sounds wrong with it is, what, do your, what does your country believe in? Like, what are the things that you value in your country? What are the things that you value? And should you put money behind the things that you actually value? Do you care about the healthcare system? Do you want to make sure the healthcare system works the way the healthcare system is supposed to work? Corbyn is making a very specific point. It is not about, you know, we have X amount of more cancer thing. It's, do you have the capacity to make sure that thing works the way that thing is supposed to work? And if that means putting in the resources that are needed in the system itself, just to keep the system up and running, just in the normal, natural wear and tear of a particular system. If you're not doing it, cherry picking certain numbers to me is not necessarily getting across the actual meaning of, of the health or the status of the actual healthcare system. Protect your healthcare system. I can't say it enough. Conservatives will go after it. Mr. Speaker, in the first three weeks of this winter, 30,000 patients were left waiting in the back of an ambulance for more than half an hour. These delays risk lives. If the NHS had the resources it needs, you would expect it to be meeting its key treatment and waiting time targets. So can the Prime Minister give us a cast iron pledge that all of those targets will be met in 2018? Prime Minister! What we are looking All right, I, what do you think Theresa May is gonna say? What do you think she's gonna say? 
you haven't been meeting your targets. If they had the money that they needed, they would more be, they would be more likely to meet their targets. I would say that's somewhat of a flat fact. If you gave a particular organization the money that that organization needed in order to, at the very least, just stand still and handle the caseload, then yes, it's just, just by definition, it would probably more likely meet its targets. The, the interesting thing here is he puts her in these situations. Like, as a conservative, that answer is never going to be yes. That answer is never going to be yes. I, I'm going to say newsflash, her answer is not going to be yes. She's not going to answer that question. Let's, let's take a look. Thing to do in 2018 is yes improve the uh, standard of care that we provide in our health service and ensure that we can improve on those figures that I have just given him that we do see more people being treated in our health service that we do see better survival rates for our cancer that's why we have been putting uh, the extra money into the national health service but it's not just about putting extra money into the national health service it is about ensuring that we see the uh, proper integration of health and social Social care at grassroots level. That's what that's what the STPs are about in many areas, opposed by the Labour Party. It is, it is why we've lifted the cap so we see more nurse training places opposed by the Labour Party. This is about ensuring that we have uh, the staff and the capability in our NHS to deliver the, worst, wor the first class, world class service that our NHS is. We should be proud of our NHS. We are, and we're going to make it even better. Yeah, that's a non answer. That would, her answer is no. We're going to improve it, but no, we're not going to make sure that we're going to hit our standards. We're not going to make sure that we hit the benchmarks that are necessary for this country to to be at its best, at the very least for the NHS. And understand, man, this is not this is not perfunctory. This is not purely just politics. Like this is not this is not two parties just arguing over this idea of, of political NHS as if the NHS is some kind of political football. There are actual people who are going to be seen by these hospitals you actually have real brits real people in the uk going to these hospitals if you're going to those hospitals don't you want to make sure those hospitals are, can adequately deal with the issues that come up just from the standpoint of that hospital operating um yeah this is real people that's all i'm saying and i'm saying it poorly but i'm trying to get across this thing that this is actual real people who are going to these hospitals and who are stuck in the back of ambulances for 30 minutes that's amazing i can't believe they allowed that that's amazing let's keep going her answer was no she didn't answer that question we're going to improve it but no we're not necessarily going to make sure it has resources it needs to hit its benchmarks so let's keep going enemy corbin look up a and e waiting time targets haven't been met for two and a half years cancer treatment targets haven't been met for two years Our a&E departments are bursting at the seams because the government has failed to ensure that people can get a GP appointment when they need one. The government promised to recruit an extra 5,000 GPs by 2020. Where are they? Prime Minister! seeing more GPs. We are seeing more training places for our GPs. But if he wants to talk about targets, if he wants to talk about what we see on targets, he talks about A&E. Well, let's look at what has happened in Wales. On the, standard, the standard on A&E in Wales was last met in 2008. Now, let me, let me just think. Which part is in government in Wales? Is it the Conservatives? No. It's the Labour Party in government in Wales. On cancer, on cancer care, the standard was last met in June 2008 in Wales. He should look at what the Labour Party are actually delivering before he comes to this House and complains. Speaker, the Welsh Government relies on a block grant from England which has been cut by 5% by 2020. Yet despite that, in Wales, 85.5% of cancer patients start their treatment within 62 days, higher than is achieved in England. Mr Speaker, my question was about GPs. 
Perhaps the Prime Minister is not aware there are a thousand less GPs than there were the day she became Prime Minister. It's not only the lack of GPs. Another issue, Mr Speaker, that's driving people into A&Es are the six billion cuts made to social care budgets. 2.3 million older people have unmet care needs. Does the Prime Minister regret, and the Chancellor is sitting absolutely next to her, that he didn't put one penny in his budget for social care? Do you know what the Conservatives in this country, and they call them Conservatives, they're off the fucking political spectrum. They're not, they will be extremists to any other country in Europe. And these guys are giving this kind of, this platform as if these guys are sane and sensible people. They're fucking irrational. Many of them are theocrats and most of them are batshit crazy. Right now, they're passing a tax bill. It's the largest tax bill in the history of, if, if I'm not mistaken, in history of any government where they're giving massive amounts of wealth to the top 1%. They're doing a $5 trillion, with a T, transfer of wealth to the top 1%. And they're taking that out the hides of the middle class and the poor. Now, this is amazing in and of itself. I mean, part of this, they didn't want to fund a healthcare program for kids. They didn't want to, um, cutting services, trying to force graduate students to pay more money for school. Like, understand what's what's taking place in order for them to allow them to accrue more wealth to the top 1%. 80% of what's taking place in this bill is gonna to go to the top 1%. This is a bill for the rich. These guys are paid money to do a particular service. In this case, it's in this country, you've been given money, lower my taxes. We don't care about the social programs. We don't care about your social fabric. We don't care about any of that stuff. We have enough money to pay for our schools. We have enough money to pay for our healthcare lower our taxes we've had it to the point where in the republican party that one of the um, congressmen came out and said well my donor said that if we don't pass this tax bill lose this phone number you had democrats coming out plutocrats snarling foaming at the mouth screaming that democrats should in no way talk about class even though the income inequality gap in this country exceeds anything else that has ever come before it if given a chance Meaning the Democrats in this party, in this country, is further to the right, but for the most part are similar to the conservatives in your country. If you allow them, they will strip away your services. The very next thing that they're going to go after, after giving these trillions of dollars of tax cuts to the top 1%, is Social Security and Medicare. The United States has little to no social safety net. When Bill Clinton, the Democrat, who's again, similar to the conservatives in your country, got into office. He's supposed to be a guy on the left and he destroyed the welfare system in this country. 70% of the people who are on that welfare system were children. That's the left. And again, that is similar to what you guys have in your country as a conservative party. I say all of this to say that if you allow them, they will rip your social safety net to the bone in the same way that the Democrats and Republicans are willing to do the exact same thing here. In our case, we never necessarily had an advocate in regards to these particular programs. We did, but his job was half done. Let's say it that way. You guys have had a longer history as a country. You guys have had more ups and downs, more political pushes. And I imagine that the people in your country have a better idea or better sense of self to allow certain things to take place in regards to your government. That doesn't necessarily mean that over time, those things can slowly change, it means those things can move further to the right. And just like in the United States, people forget themselves. They lose track of their historical context. So they don't necessarily know that you had socialists and communists and all these other people in this country that was pushing on the Democratic Party. From their standpoint, there's only been the Democrats and Republicans. They lose context. They didn't know that they had a party that was fighting for unions and fighting for workers and all this other stuff and was actually representing those interests. They lose context. What they know is the Democratic Party, who again, I make the point, is essentially the conservative party in your country. These guys will rip these things from you. And in the same way that Democrats were talking about privatized social security, in the same way Democrats came up with the deal to privatize social security, they will rip these things from you. Protect 
your social safety net. They will come after it. And I, I will guarantee you the argument that they use in the United States is, well, look, we have a $20 trillion debt. We got to pay that debt down, man. And in order to pay that debt down, we need to get rid of Social Security and Medicare because we can't afford those things. You kind of make this point that, yeah, well, we can't afford those things. You just need the A, you can raise taxes. That's the first part. If you care that much about the deficit, raise taxes. Let's have that conversation. But those things would never come up in this country. Both parties are essentially corrupted with cash, and both parties have been told not to bring up issues of class. This idea of having a government do this stuff. Until Sanders ran, it was never heard of. It wasn't heard of. It was looked at as a political no-no. This is, and, and I don't want to drill this down too much, and I know I am a beating a dead horse on this. But given the chance, they would move your country further and further and further to the right. And your country will be to the point where it f completely forgets its history on this. And it would think that the way things were were the way things always are. And it would think that that's perfectly normal. And you would have people in your society fighting hard for the plutocrats taking positions that purely are not in their best interest because that's the only way they've ever known things to be. Protect your social safety net. They will rip it. They would tear it to shreds. Prime Minister! We have put two billion pounds extra money into social care. We did that in the spring budget. But he started his, his question, he started his question uh, by referencing the record of the last Labour government on health. Well, you know, the last, the last Labour government's record on health, their NHS legacy was described as a mess. We're clearing that up, we're putting more money into the NHS. But who was it who described who was it who described Labour's NHS legacy as a mess? It was the right honourable gentleman. When, when, he's running, when he's running for leader, he denounces the Labour Party. Now he's leader of the Labour Party, he's trying to praise it. I'm going to let Jeremy Corbyn answer this, but I love how um, when she spoke her piece, like when she said what she had to say, she leered at him. I love this, man. I love in British politics. There's certain things that don't take place in America in regards to the way people inter engage in one another. You guys have a more honest form of engagement where they're just curling barbs at one another. But there's this peacocking at a certain point where she's like leering over to the stash box and she's kind of like, Ugh. I just said something mighty powerful. You know, this type of thing. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's keep going. It's fucking awesome. Ah, uh, come on. Come on. Here we go. Robin, speaker. Can I, um, <clears throat> give some, um, Mr. Speaker, I could quote the Prime Minister something she might be familiar with. If the government wants to reduce the pressures on the health service and keep people out of hospital in the first place, then it needs to tackle the chronic underfunding of care and support services in the community, which are at a tipping point. Who said that? Izzy Seacombe, Conservative leader of Warwickshire County Council. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the question was on social care, but the issue is about the NHS as a whole. It's there, Mr Speaker, to provide care and dignity for all if they fall ill. But our NHS goes into this winter in crisis. Nurses and other workers, no pay rise for years. NHS targets not met for years. Staff shortages, GP numbers falling. The reality is mental health budgets have been cut, social care budgets have been cut, public health budgets cut. The Prime Minister today has shown just how out of touch she is. The truth is, Mr Speaker, our NHS is being recklessly, recklessly put at risk by her government. That is the truth, Mr Speaker. Prime Minister! The Right Honourable Gentleman is wrong because NH funding... By the way, real quick, I don't want... Quick interjection. 
I, look, I'll cover British politics, and I, I know you guys may not fully understand this. This may seem normal to you. You guys literally have somebody out here who's actually arguing for the society itself. That is mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. Now, that should be the most natural thing in the world. It should be make perfect sense that a candidate would get up and say, look, we're going to need we're going to do these things because these things are in the best interest of the public, not necessarily in the best interest of the plutocrats. That sounds like the most natural thing in the world. You have 99 percent of the population to one. I mean, just by definition of, you know, 99 percent to one. That's mind blowing. That's mind blowing. In this country, we have robots that are getting rid of the homeless out of an SPA shelter. There's nobody who's talking about homelessness, the poor, none of this stuff. And you guys have the prime minister of your country battling for the NHS in your country, essentially trying to get this idea of healthcare services up to snuff. If you don't want them, send them to America. <laughs> we'll take them. Funding, NHS funding has gone up. He's wrong because social care funding has gone up. But you know, not that long ago, not that long ago, the right honourable gentleman was saying that he would be Prime Minister by Christmas. Well, he was... Uh... This is about to hurt. <laughs> this is about to hurt. Oh man, this is going to hurt. He was wrong. I am and the Conservatives are in government. long ago he said we wouldn't deliver on phase one of the brexit negotiations well he was wrong we've made sufficient progress and we're moving on to phase two of the brexit negotiations and not that long ago he predicted that the budget that the budget would be a failure in fact the budget was a success and it's delivering more money for our national health service Wrong, wrong, wrong. Conservatives in government delivering on Brexit, a budget for homes and the health service. Conservatives delivering a Britain fit for the future. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. There is this thing. Um, I can't think of the name. I think it was Blair. Tony Blair was going after one of these other guys. He was... I, th I don't think he was prime minister. I think he was in opposition. And it was this guy with these really thick, thick, thick glasses. Like these ridiculously, almost cartoonish glasses. And Tony Blair is like glaring at the guy and screaming at him. You're awake, awake, awake. Like that's this, this triplet of things. Wrong, wrong, wrong. That's what it sounds like. All right. Prime minister's questions for this week. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the Patreon. Thanks, guys.